Hello, everybody. Welcome along to Sports Bet TV, where uh, I'm looking forward to some very, very good racing coming up over this weekend uh, in Britain and in Ireland, where, of course, in Ireland, we start the season on turf with a traditional opening meeting, which is going to be at the Curra on Saturday. Now, I've got one selection for you at the Curra, and I've also got one other selection for you uh, down at Newbury over the sticks. So two free tips for you. Uh, at Sports Bet with me, Paul Alster, today. If you're um, stumbling across this uh, channel for the first time on YouTube, please press the subscribe button. It is free to subscribe and you get my free tips here each and every time. Well, just before I go to uh, this weekend's selections, let's just look back at uh, Cheltenham uh, briefly, where at uh, Sports Bet, I gave you eight selections, all of them pretty good um, double figure odds. Now, the first three all failed to hit the target, although one of them, Gordon Zora, missed out by just a short head on being placed at 8.080 to 1. Now, that would really have um, made the uh, fixture a very, very big success. But regardless of that, and without finding a winner amongst my long shots, we still ended up in profit, because while the first three did not reach the place, uh, the payout places, uh, we had Epson de Hoo at 20 to 1, Antaire at 11 to 1, Royal Thief at 12 to 1, Hyde Piper just missed out at 16 to 1, and more of that in a minute, and Might I at 11 to 1. So overall, even though there wasn't a winner amongst them, because we're betting at decent odds and betting each way looking for value, Cheltenham ended up to the level £10 each way stakes with a £28 profit, and it's certainly better a £28 profit uh, than a £28 loss. So most certainly uh, a good time uh, at Sportsbet with those selections. It could have been so different had Gordon Zora just dropped its nose um, into the sixth place uh, in the on the opening day at 80 to 1. But while there were no winners at Sportsbet, unfortunately, at Out in Front, uh, my um, premium subscription service where I offer more selections, uh, it was a fantastic meeting, and I'm grateful to those of you that did join me um, coming over from Sportsbet to join up at Out in Front because you've had a marvellous Cheltenham Festival. Now, while the first two days were not overly successful, although we had a couple of places at 4 over 40 to 1 and 11 to 1 on day one, and then a 16 to 1 place on day two, uh, days three and four were really special because on day three, I tipped to my out in front followers, Seddon at 28 to one, and he made all to win the Magnus Plate Handicap Chase. So that was a really big profit at 28 to one. Uh, that was alongside Flooring Porter, who also ran into the fourth place, which was paid each way. And then on Friday, things really happened. As you know, at Sports Ben, I tipped you Pied Piper, who missed out by a very narrow margin in the county hurdle, and the horse that beat him was the one that I tipped over it out in front. It was Fabwa, who I recommended at 66 to 1. And he and Pied Piper went clear. I believe one or two of my subscribers at out in front did, in fact, have the reverse forecast, which paid very nearly a thousand to one. But many were on at 66 to 1 and bigger on the exchanges on Fabwa. So that was a truly fantastic tip there and it could even have got better because in the final race no ordinary joe was my choice 22 to 1 just run out of it finishing second in the concluding martin pipe it meant that overall at cheltenham at out in front of the level stakes 10 pounds each way bets we ended up with a profit of 1027 pounds which is tremendous really uh, we are absolutely delighted i'm proud of myself and it would have been great if more of you had been involved. If you do want to get involved going forward, then please just press the link below this screen, joining us at Patreon for the Out in Front service, which is now available at just £25 a month plus that. And that's for all my tips, all the weekend action that I cover, the big festivals, and indeed some midweek fancies that will come up here and there. So have a good think about that. And in the meantime, let's move on to my two free tips at Sports Bet for Saturday. So the first one is over at the Curra. I couldn't let the Curra go by on the first day of the flat season on turf without a selection. And me being me, of course, I don't like to make it easy for myself, uh, like so many tipsters, tipping you a shorty. 
I'm having a look at the Irish Lincolnshire handicap. The Irish Lincoln, 27 runners over a mile. The going is softer, heavy, heavy in places. It is going to be really, really testing. Now, as was the case a couple of times at Cheltenham, in these big handicaps, I'm fancying two. One of them I'll be recommending uh, at uh, out in front, which is uh, even bigger odds than the big odds I'm recommending you here each way at Sportsbet. Now, what do we know about these horses? Well, fitness, stable form, the draw, um, any ground bias. We don't know anything about that because it is the first meeting of the season. But what we do know is that there are two British Raiders and they've both been put in at the head of the market. The first of them is George Bowie's Totally Charming, who was a 9-2 to two co-favourite last time I had a look. A horse that had won three of its last five, including a seven-furlong event on heavy ground at Doncaster last October to sign off the season. And it starts off eight pounds higher here. George Bowie, a terrific trainer. Uh, I think he's got a runner in Dubai on Saturday. Um, and he's certainly moving up very high towards the top of the tree. Already at the top of the tree is William Haggis. He's got Latam, who's only had four runs. He's a very unexposed horse, winner of a Thursk mile novice stakes on good to soft ground in July. But then, to be honest, was outclassed in a couple of handicaps. Um, they may well have just overfaced him at that stage of his career. The fact that William sends him across the Irish Sea at this time of year with so little experience suggests He's probably done very well in the winter, but for me, looks too short at around 11 to 2. Now, one very interesting thing about this race, really, you would have thought it was a bookie's bonanza overall. But despite the field size, eight of the last 10 winners have actually been 10 to 1 or less. Um, and most of them have come from either the centre or low draw, which is worth bearing in mind. Now, Adrian McGuinness, who won this race with Bowerman in 2020, he seems to be setting his stall out. He's got nine runners. He's doing a Gordon Elliott. Um, he's got nine runners. Uh, the shortest priced amongst them last time I glanced was the 12 to 1 shot No More Porter, who goes very well at the Curra. And uh, last time he visited the track was second of 20, beaten a neck in a six furlong handicap. So he's an interesting selection um, amongst the um, McGuinness runners. But I do think uh, that um, he's going for the scattergun approach. And who knows, it may well work. It has worked before. Now, amongst the Aras, uh, Emporio for Donica O'Brien and uh, Cosmic Vega for Mick Halford are both horses that are closely matched on their running at Nace in November. And you could not with any real confidence, rule either of them out. But as I suggested, I'm taking two against the field, one that I'll mention at out in front, and the other one is a horse that I think will really relish conditions, and that is um, a horse called Maud Gone Spirit, trained by Jesse Harrington, who hasn't been very well of late. We wish her uh, all the best with her treatment and hope that she recovers very, very quickly. Um, and it's ridden by Shane Foley. So this is Morgan Spirit, a horse that loves the soft ground. It won a mile handicap at Limerick in October and also won on uh, yielding to soft ground at Gowran in uh, September of last year. It won at Limerick uh, in October 21. Now, this horse um, is a horse I think can go really well. Um, it goes particularly well fresh. It loves the soft ground. It likes a big field and a galloping track. And it's drawn nine, which I think could be quite a positive draw. And the best odds on offer at the time of this recording um, at uh, lunchtime on Friday is 33 to one each way for six places. And that is my choice for you here. Maud Gone Spirit, the shorter price at 33 to one of the two that I fancy for this cavalry charge at the Curra on Saturday afternoon, the 325, the Irish Lincolnshire Handicap. And then I take you to Britain for my second selection on Saturday. It is at Newbury. It's the final event there, the five o'clock. It's a three mile veterans handicap chase on soft ground and there are 11 runners. Now, as is always the case in these type of races, lots of old favourites that many of us know and love. Um, they were betting around four to one joint favourite, uh, Boldmere and Cyclops. And Boldmere for Alex Hales won well at Doncaster last time out, but that was on good ground, gone up six pounds. And for me, the soft gown is going to be uh, just a slight concern. 
for Bold Mere. Well, Cyclop um, for David Dennis is on a hat trick. And this horse clearly is in very good form. It's won at Musselburgh. And then last time out, it won at Newbury over the extended trip of three and a quarter miles three weeks ago. Has gone up just a total of seven pounds, which is by no means unfair. And they've got a young condition along called Ned Fox, who's pretty good. And he claims seven pounds. So a horse in form that's won at the track last time is Cyclop. Now, Ruthless Article is trained by Rebecca Curtis, who won this race in 2021. The horse has gone up five pounds for its latest win at Utoxeter, over three and a quarter miles. But it's another horse that I'm not convinced will be ideally suited by what we are anticipating is going to be proper soft ground. Now, Sean Keithley has got an interesting runner called Witness Protection. And this one had its first run for 14 months when it was pulled up at Weatherby in January a couple of months ago. It bled, bled from the nose, so it would have burst a little blood vessel by the sound of things. That was over two miles. Uh, it's obviously well again. It's up to three miles now, but has never won at this kind of a trip under rules. Indeed, it's never won beyond two and a quarter miles, although it has run well at around two miles five. But it is still an unexposed horse, having had just four runs over fences. And you might want to keep an eye on that one for a positive market move. And then amongst the other old timers, we've got Chirico Vallis for Neil Mulholland, uh, Commodore for Venetia Williams and Sir Ivan for Harry Fry. Harry won this race last year. And to be honest, they're all pretty well handicapped on the pick of their old form. But my choice here will be Saint Xavier. Saint Xavier is trained by Richard Hobson and is the mount of Lily Pynchon, who claims three pounds. And Lily has been doing really well, making a proper name for herself this season. And the one thing that this horse really does like is soft ground. And he's got his conditions on Saturday afternoon. Now, at his best, a few seasons ago, he was rated up at 150. So this was a, a really good horse, but he's still capable. He's an 11-year-old. And he showed his no-back number when he won at Haydock in November, over nearly three and a quarter miles on soft ground, up a mark of 121. And after that, he ran very well indeed to be fifth of 18 in a hot um, veterans three-mile chase at Sandown on soft ground in January. That was the race you may remember was worth £100,000, and uh, he ran very well for a long way. And then last time out, he was running a particularly good race in the Grand National Trial at... Uh, Haydock Park, the, the race won by Venetia Williams's mare, in which Cloudy Glen finished third. And he was up there tracking Cloudy Glen in second place when he made an uncharacteristic bad mistake at the six from home, I think it was. And from that point onwards, his saddle started to slip. So to be fair, whilst he probably wouldn't have won the race, um, his jockey wasn't able to offer him the assistance. So the fact that he finished down the field to such an extent can be to a great extent overlooked because the horse, the horse's tack uh, came loose. So the fact we know he's in form, he's got his ground, he goes well at this kind of a track. Um, he's down in grade as well, having run in the grade three Grand National Trial last time out. The trip is ideal and he's got a top conditional rider uh, on board claiming three pounds. And on top of all of that, the Brucey bonus is that he's actually been dropped three pounds for the Haydock run, even though the saddle slipped. Interesting to know whether the handicapper was aware that that saddle has slipped and the rider couldn't ride him out properly. So he's now down to 122, which is only a pound above the mark at which he won at Haydock in November. And on that basis, I think he'll run very well indeed. Only one firm have gone up early at the time of this recording, and that's good old William Hills, who are offering 17 to two each way, eight and a half to one. Um, those are early odds. It's a, just a market tester. He may well prove to be bigger. So look out for the value there and try and get on each way. And with 11 runners, it might well prove to be the case that some firms will go four places. So those are my two um, for you at Sportsbet today. San Xavier in the five o'clock at Newbury and over at the Curra in the 325, the Irish Lincolnshire Handicap. Um, two selections. One of them is available for subscribers at Out in Front. And do remember there as well that you can subscribe at any time and cancel at any time. There's no tie-in. I'm confident enough in the service that I'm not uh, keeping people tied in when they might not want to be. Whatever people's choice is, that is their prerogative. 
I have tipped you the one though in the Irish Lincolnshire here at Sports Bet 325, the Curra Maud Gone Spirit. So that's it for this weekend. Uh, I hope you have a really good weekend and the horses run well for you. And I'll be back same time next week. Bye bye for now. Thank you.